What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on chapter four in our series of the SSI Boat Diver Specialty Program. And we really hope this series opens your eyes and gives you a little bit better understanding of how to stay safe and efficient when you're on a dive boat. But as we stated in the other videos, please make sure you're seeking out proper training from your local SSI boat diving instructor prior to trying to go out and dive off a dive boat. So with that being said, let's jump into chapter four. Now the first part of this chapter we're going to talk about is the entry procedures and the things that you should do just prior to jumping in. We know that you've got your exposure suit on and we know that you got your equipment on and you may even have your fins on at this point, but do you have the last minute items you need? Maybe a camera, a spear pole, or different things like that. Did you and your buddy do a pre-dive safety check? Did you go over your equipment to make sure everything's working and that you and your buddy can both manipulate each other's gear? And of course, did you do your gas check? Did you do a gas management? All this needs to be done kind of at the spur of the moment just prior to jumping in to make sure everything's good. In the very next part of this, we're going to talk about the different entry methods based off what type of vessel you're on. Are you going to do a giant stride, a rollback, a controlled seated? Are you going to jump in without your equipment and have them hand it down to you? That's actually very common with a lot of side mount divers as well. So let's take a different, a quick look at the different types of entry methods as well just prior to jumping in. Now, depending what type of vessel you're on, you may actually do, say, a giant stride entry. This is what you learn in your open water program. Or you may do a rollback entry, depending on how high that vessel is. There's a lot of times vessels where you might do a giant stride off the back, or they will allow you to do the rollback off, say, the side of the vessel as well. Now, if the water is very turbid and you may not know what's actually below you, you may actually be able to do, say, a controlled seated entry. Now, a controlled seated entry is going to be great as well if you have some type of physical handicap that's not going to allow you to walk with all that heavy gear. You can actually walk to the back of the boat, sit down, put your gear on at the back of the boat while seated, and then of course do a controlled seated entry as well. Once you're in the water, of course, you can give your final okays, and then when you and your buddy are ready, you can simply descend down to start your dive. Now that you're in the water and you're ready to actually descend, we need to make sure that we're doing it the right way. If you're simply descending down on the reef, you and your buddy can simply descend at whatever rate you need to to properly equalize. This is called a free descent or an open descent. However, there are times when you may need to go down, say, an anchor line or some type of line that's attached to, say, a shipwreck or something like that. Now, if you're in a drift diving situation, you may need to descend very quickly to make sure that you get at the diving level you need to be at for that drift dive. You and your buddy want to make sure that you're staying together, or if you're diving with a group, you want to make sure that you're staying together until everybody's good to go, and then you can commence with the dive. Make sure you're checking with the local charter crew that you're diving with, or your instructor, or even your dive buddy, and make sure you're staying with the dive plan. Now, if conditions change outside what your dive plan is, you may actually need to abort that dive just to stay safe while out diving on that charter. Now, when we talk about currents and drift diving, there is a course that you can take, which is the SSI Wave Tides and Currents course. Now, this is a great course because it's going to teach you how to dive, say, in a river against a stream current, something like that. It's also going to teach you how to drift dive while maybe you're out in, say, Cozumel or down in the Florida Keys. Now, if you are drift diving, is there going to be a dive master with you who is dragging a flag with you? That way that boat can drift along with you and stay in contact with you. If there's not going to be with one, maybe you're solo diving, you want to make sure that you've got your own personal dive flag or an SMB that can mark you as you're diving and that can, boat can actually stay up with you. Just make sure that you're coordinate with the local crew there and the local captain so that he understands where you're going to be and that you understand how that boat's going to follow you throughout the dive. So the next part of this chapter we're going to talk about is gas management. And gas management is one of the fundamentals to all types of diving, but more so even on a charter boat. When you're out there, if, whether you're diving a solo or you're diving with your buddy, it's very important that you have proper gas management and that you can plan that gas management as well. The charter may give you an actual hour of bottom time, if you will, but if your gas management's not there and you may only need to take 40 minutes, then that's something you might want to let the crew know about. You may have to abort your dive a little bit earlier than, say, what one of the other divers are. So having proper gas management will keep you safe when you're diving from a boat. 
Recall systems. Now, this is something that should be gone over during the briefing, whether the boat captain or a dive master goes over it. You need to understand when you should actually ascend back to the surface. If there's an emergency on board, that boat captain can't just leave with all these divers in the water. So you need to understand what the local recall system is for that charter or liveaboard or even a personal recall system so that you know when it's time to ascend. And yes, once again, if it's an emergency, you may have to abort your dive earlier, but that's okay as long as every dive diver is being safe and they understand exactly how to get back on that vessel. Now, whether it was an emergency and you had to return back to the boat or it's just a typical dive and it's at the end of the dive, you need to understand the safest way to ascend and get back on that vessel. Typically, we always tell you to do a safety stop and a lot of dive charters will drop a hang bar at around 15 feet so that you can hang out and do a proper safety stop. Or if you're a tech diver, even a proper decompression stop. Now, with that being said, once you get back to the surface, you need to understand that you don't want to overcrowd that ladder. If there's a diver in front of you and he's climbing that ladder, if he gets catapulted off that vessel, he can actually land on you and cause injury. So you want to make sure that you're giving people plenty of space to get up on that vessel. Once you, it is your turn, of course, you're going to swim over to the ladder, remove your fins if need be, and hand them up first. You may even have to remove your equipment first. Check with your charter system and see what they recommend for you getting back on the boat. Now, once you are on the boat, you want to make sure that you get it seated promptly and get your equipment off. It's a lot easier to walk around without that gear on, plus you can get out of the way for the the next diver as well. It's all about being safe when diving from a boat. Now, as I stated just a minute ago, it really depends on what type of vessel you're on. That's going to determine what type of re-entry you do or how do you get back on board. A lot of boats will actually have a ladder that you're going to climb up with your equipment on. You simply hand your fins up, but there's going to be certain ladders that you can climb up with your fins. I love these T-shaped ladders because you can actually, or what I call fin-friendly ladders, you can actually climb with your fins on. Now, there are times when I may need to remove certain pieces of equipment. I know a lot of times when I side mount dive, instead of trying to climb up with these tanks hanging off my side, of course, I can remove the bottles and hand them up as needed. And then, of course, I can climb up with basically no weight on. Just make sure you're checking with the dive master and the boat crew and even the captain himself to see what they recommend before you climb up. Now, there are times when you may need to remove all your equipment before getting on. It really is based off the environment and what the boat crew actually recommends. Now, of course, if you're on your own vessel and you're the boat captain and the mate and, of course, the diver itself, you may need other measures put into place. On our personal vessels, one of the things I like to do is put a tagline out behind the boat. So once I swim over to the edge of the boat, I can remove my fins, put them up on, on the deck of the boat itself, and then, of course, I can remove my gear and tie off to that tagline. That way, I don't have to worry about trying to push that gear up myself. I can climb up the ladder once I'm on the boat. Of course, I can pull my gear up with the rope that I tied off to. Just these simple little tips and techniques will help you in the future, especially if you're diving off your own private vessel. Now let's talk about something that nobody really wants to talk about, and that's, of course, being stranded at sea. And yes, this does happen occasionally, but it is rare. If it ever happens to you, you do not have to panic. The first thing you want to do is remain calm. Make sure your BC is inflated. You can even ditch the weights if you need to. That guarantees you're not going to be able to go back underwater. Of course, then you can deploy an SMB. You can even have a whistle as an audible device to help reach out to send a signal. There are other devices. One of the ones that we sell is the Garmin InReach 2 that actually is going to send out an emergency beacon if you ever find yourself stranded at sea. Now, if this happens, once again, the main thing is to remain calm and remain positively buoyant. That boat will come back after you or they will send the Coast Guard. And if you remain visible by having your SMD, SMB deployed and remain calm, they will find you. So guys, that's going to do it for chapter four in this video series. Please stay tuned. we got one more video left in this series, and we really believe this series is going to help you become a better diver as well. Guys, if you got any questions on boat diving, drop me a comment down below, and we really hope this video series is a review session for you to help pass your boat diver certification. But guys, that's going to do it for today. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.